Welcome back to Sip to Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans, and today we're going to take a look at what used to be a strength for us, but now we're kind of moving away from that and making it a, a strength again. And I know that really don't make sense, but give me a second. Way back when Lamar Jackson took over, you know, Joe Flacco was a starter. He got hurt. Lamar Jackson took over, and we kind of implemented some things that Joe Flacco was not doing, the QB run and some other things, and you know, we eventually moved on from Joe Flacco, made Lamar the starter. So our base runs when Lamar became the starter were gap runs, power, counter, pin and pull. You also add QB counter, uh, counter bash was added. All those were still gap runs. So now with Munkin coming in, a uh, new regime, we're trying to get away from all that, you know, power, power, power stuff to increase the longevity of our team and also to keep our quarterback out of out of harm's way. We're kind of moving. We still run the gap runs, but they are not our base runs anymore. Inside zone is really our base run. And when you have a spread team, and I've been doing spread stuff for a long time, when you have a spread team, inside run, inside zone needs to be your base run. Inside zone team with a little outside zone needs to be your base run and we are starting to move away from the gap run being our base run and i got a few numbers to give to you to, to kind of show you that let me grab my notes and this is just from this year now i'm not gonna even go back to the roman days i'm just gonna stick in the present week one our zone runs we ran 10 and we based off 17 gap runs so that's still gap heavy week two Still same number. 10 zone runs to 17 gap runs. Week 3, 11 zone runs to 17 gap runs. Still, still gap heavy. Week 4, which is crazy, only 4 zone runs to 21 gap runs. Now you're about to start to see a shift. Week 5, 11 zone runs to 10 gap runs. You're starting to see more spread stuff. Week 6, this is the first time but well, this will be the second time that we had more zone runs than gap runs. 16 zones, 13 gaps. And then yesterday, 11 zones to 9 gaps. So what I want to do is show you inside zone, how we ran it yesterday, and how it sets up other stuff. You remember the play where Mark scored the touchdown? That was a fake off of inside zone. And inside zone sets up a lot of play action stuff, sets up a lot of slip stuff. And when you can run inside zone, it can hit a bunch of different ways. And it can also set up your RPOs. It can set up your play action. It can set up QB runs. If you can run inside zone successfully, and successful don't mean eight, nine yards of pop. Successful just mean two, three, four, five yards. But it sets up so much other stuff that you can do, especially when you have a quarterback that can move. Let's get into it. Inside Zone with Coach Evans on Zip the Tally Films. Run the intro. And again, welcome back. We're going to start, we're going to talk about moving from gap schemes to zone schemes. But before we do that, Smash that like button. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified when the rest of the videos drop throughout the 2023 season. But again, back to inside zone. Here we go. Lamar positioning Zay, telling me to get on the other side. Motioning likely out to get a guy out the box, which is cool, so you get a better picture of, of what you're up against. Now here, on this in particular zone inside zone situation they're locking the box and this is a little different from traditional zone read and it's a lock call now when you have a lock call and different people call it different things but the way i was taught it and the way i teach it when you have a lock call you block the end man on line of scrimmage and you read a second level defender in this case you're reading jack campbell jack campbell is the guy that's highlighted he's also the guy that lamar's looking at that opens the 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 door to be able to do RPOs on the second level. So that's the lock call. You read the second level defender and that tells the tackle instead of going to block that second level guy, 
You block the end man on line of scrimmage, and we are now going to read that second level defender. That's the lock call, and they may call it different things in different places, but I know it as a lock call. You know, people learn different things, terminology, but it's still the same thing. Going forward, look at the double team up front with Zeidler and uh, Linderbaum. Again, that's the key to inside zone is that double team. It's going to be somewhere, but the thing is, Linderbaum has to find a way to work up to that linebacker. He has to find it. That's going to be the key. Simpson has to stay where he is. He's good. Stanley's good. Morgan Moses is good. We got a hat on the hat. But Linderbaum has to find a way to get off that double and get to that mic to make this work. And you see it right there. Linderbaum disengages. He starts to work to the linebacker. Everybody right now is still good. Still good. Gus decides to cut back, which is good. It's a good open lane. Simpson just does not have enough of his guy to allow Gus to get through there. But that's how zone works. You try to get a hat on the hat, it's going to be an initial double team. Oh, I forgot to talk about the read. Look at the shoulders of, of um, who is this? Jack Campbell. See how his shoulders are square? Whether you're reading the E-man on line of scrimmage or you're reading the second level defender, if these shoulders are square, as a quarterback, give the ball. Give the ball. Now, there'll be instances where the shoulders are turned toward, let's say, let me see if I can draw this for you. See, if the shoulders are turned in this direction, that's an automatic pull. That's an automatic pull for the quarterback. But when they're turned in a way that Campbell's shoulders are, you've got to hand the ball off because that defender can then go left and right and make plays on the quarterback. But now back to the O-line play. Simpson has to stay on that inside number drive. And now he's getting cross-faced, which is allowed the guy to disengage, go get Gus. But initially, we're good. We still picked up four or five yards, which is good for inside zone. Four or five yards of pop on inside zone is good, even if it's not blocked perfectly. Let's go to the second one. And again, this is a base play. Inside zone is a base run. It's a setup run. You don't have to hit a home run on it every time. You don't. Now, in this case, since they in motion, it took a guy out of the box, but it also put a guy in the box. You can use this if you got a guy that you feel like it's easier to block because it took Campbell out the box and put an, as Anna Lonesy, Anna Lonesy, you know who I'm talking about. I, it's hard to say his name. Put him in the box. But you still got the same thing. You got your double team with, with John Simpson and Linda Baum. That's two for two right there. You got the scoop block with Zeitler. You got, again, you got Morgan Moses. This time, he's going to lock. And this time, you got this guy out here. Now, I don't think Lamar's reading this. I think this is a straight-up give on the lock on this one because we have no guy to read. And if he is reading it, the guy's way out here. And I don't think he's reading that guy that far out. I think this is a straight-up give. But you have a hat on a hat. Look at that. Hat on a hat. A hat on a hat. Now, me personally... I think, this is me personally, I think Justice Hill puts his head down and should shoot that gap right there. I think he dances a little bit too much. But I also think, and I'm calling his name again, John Simpson should be on this side of this guy, driving him that way. He's, his head is in the wrong place. Linda Bum's head is in the right spot. Ryan's head is in the right spot. Simpson's on the wrong side of this guy. He's allowed this guy to cross his face. If he doesn't allow this guy to cross his face, Justice Hill can hit that thing right there, and it'd be one-on-one -on -one with this, whoever the safety is up here. But Simpson's in the wrong spot. But, again, we're doing good on inside zone despite Simpson's blunders. Despite Simpson's blunders. Everybody else is perfect. Everybody else is perfect. But, again, it forces Justice Hill to do a little dancing in the back back backfield that he shouldn't have to do if your head's in the right spot. See, and Justice makes this cut. And the reason he makes the cut because of the head placement of the D tackle. Like if his head isn't right here, looking at him, Justice doesn't make this cut. If John Simpson is 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 where he needs to be, Justice hit that thing right there and gone by his business. But he makes what I think is an unnecessary cut because of the head placement of the D tackle, and that's because Simpson is was almost on his knees again. But still, with me saying all that and kind of complaining about it, we still had a seven to eight yard gain. That's the beauty of inside zone. And having a back that can jump cut and do those things. 
that and don't forget about that last scene is having a back that can jump cut and still hit the ground full speed and do those things. You can't have a clunky back to do that. That's why I think Justice Hill fits what we do better than Gus. But Gus is having a doing a great job of refusing to be taken off the field. Refusing because he's producing. Now, this is traditional zone read. The, the read is Kaminsky. Look at Lamar watching it. Look at Kaminsky. Now, you got to read his shoulders. Look at his shoulders. And we talked about the shoulders. They're square. So he has to give this ball. This is a give all day long because Kaminsky's shoulders are square. They are not turned like I showed you earlier. So you give this ball. So now, with that being said, we got the read part figured out. Look at the O-line. Ronnie Stanley's working up to the second level. Simpson is, is one-on-one with his guy. Zeitler has his guy walled off. Moses has his guy walled off. Linderbaum's working his way up to second level. Let's, let, let's run it. Now, with that bubble, all Justice Hill has to do is get tight behind Tyler Linderbaum. We got a wall. We got a bubble in the, in the defense. Got a bubble in the defense. Now, uh, whoever the, this defender is for Detroit is doing a good job of not being moved. Kudos to this dude by kind of closing this off. And then kudos to whoever this is that's going against Simpson for kind of closing that down. But Justice Hill does a good job of getting skinny and finding his way up there to Linderbaum. Justice Hill did a good job of getting skinny and getting through that hole before it completely closed, putting his hand on Linderbaum's back to get through the hole. Now, exploding through there. Now, he got through there, and now he can use his speed. Great job of running the rock by Justice Hill right there. It's a great job of being a runner. It's a great job by the O-line, too, of doing just enough. Just enough. It don't have to be perfect. It don't have to be perfect. Because Simpson getting his butt whooped. Simpson is getting his butt whooped. I'm telling you. I'm telling you what I know. This is the third play. Three plays, Simpson getting his butt whooped. But all been positive yards. But they all been positive yards. Let's go to the next one. I will tell you this. If these were gap runs and Simpson was getting his butt whooped, they'd probably be negative plays. Again, it's traditional inside zone, and you see the guy, shoulder square. So with their shoulders being square, you can tell they were coached to stay square and make Lamar hand the ball off. They would rather have the running backs running than Lamar running the ball. And with that being said, it turns up to the O-line. Look at the O-line. Look at you, you got two double teams now. Now watch this. You got a double with Stanley and Simpson, and you got a double with Linda Bum and Zyla. And both of them come off perfectly. Look at that. Look at that wall. Look at that wall. Now, the defender, he got to respect Lamar. And by him respecting Lamar, look at the gap that's created right here. Look at that void. Look at that void. That's going to be just enough for Gus to kind of scoot through and get some yards. Just enough. Watch. Don't hit it, Gus. And because Gus is a load, that's a five-yard game. That's a five-yard game. I said, we'll take it. We'll take it. So if that was first down, now second and five, we'll take that all day, every day. Again, another traditional inside zone. You read Aiden Hutchinson. He's trying to slow play you. When, when in doubt, give it. When in doubt, give it. Now, at this point, you, you got to give it. So now your, your line, your eyes, I'm sorry, focuses to the old line. Again, Simpson getting his butt whooped. But everybody else winning. Everybody else is winning. Everybody else is winning. And with that being said, look at the cutback. Because Hutchinson has to respect Lamar. And just like that last play, you got this little gap that Gus can hit it and fall forward for five yards. Because you got to respect Lamar. You got to. And the thing is, and I'll tell you this, if, if Hutchinson don't respect Lamar and just close down on this, Lamar pulls this ball and now he in all this open space by himself. So now you put this man in a world of trouble. So do I close down and stop Gus from getting these five yards and risk the fact of Lamar getting 50 yards? Or do I play like I'm supposed to and let Gus get these five yards every time, five yards every time, five yards every time? That's the beauty of inside zone. But then you come back, you come back, and you sprinkle some outside zone in it. Now, watch this. This guy was on my stock up yesterday in my in my little video. Watch Pat Ricard one-on-one with, with Aiden Hudson. No help. Moses is not going to help him. Aiden Hutchinson is supposed to be a top dog. Pat Ricard can go to work on him. You sprinkle in outside zone to complement inside zone. 
This is this is what you're gonna get. You're getting scoop block from Stanley up to the second level. You're getting Morgan Moses scoop blocking that defensive tackle. You're getting a double team with Linda Baum and Zyla going up to the second level. Morgan Moses is trying to scoop block to Aiden Hutchinson, but Patrick Ricard is going to take care of Aiden Hutchinson by himself. Morgan Moses realizes that and he's gonna go up to the second level by himself. Gus's path is Pat Ricard's butt. If Pat Ricard can scoop block Aiden Hutchinson or run him out, if he if he scoops him, he's gonna go outside of Pat Ricard. If he runs him out, he's going to stick his foot and get right inside and get up, up the field. Watch all this takes place. That's Gus's path. You see, initially, Morgan Moses tries to come over there like he's going to help with Aiden Hutchinson, but Ricard don't need it. Ricard don't need it, and Morgan Moses goes up. Now, at this point, Gus kind of stutters because he sees two gaps opening up. He's trying to figure out which one he needs to take. So he kind of stutters, stutters his steps. But now he see he sees the blocking kind of play out, and now he sees way he sees the bubble right there, he sees the bubble right there. And now he's gonna hit it, and when I when I tell you he hits it, he hits it like a Mack truck. Watch him run through these arm tackles. Nope, 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 nope. That's what I'm saying. Gus running this hard, he's making it hard for people to take him out of the lineup. And I just wanted to highlight like the inside zone play. It don't have to hit for 50 every time. Five here, three there, four there. And when you add the zone read part of it, when the, when those guys get greedy and get tired of giving up five yards to whatever running backs in the game, Lamar pull it and hit it for 60 or 70, then that's going to be a problem. And then when they start locking it and doing the RPOs off of it, you saw them working on it in this game. He hit one to Odell. A couple a couple bad passes that you saw going to the dirt, those were those guys practicing RPOs. So I'm telling you, the inside zone is going to be a bigger part of this offense because you can do so much more stuff off of it. And now it's to the point where I've been rambling for a minute, so I'm going to get up out of here. I appreciate everybody for coming through. I appreciate all the patrons. Like, comment, subscribe, share. And I'm going to get up out of here. This is Coach Evans with Sip the Talent Films. I'll see y'all later. Peace, 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 and love.